Hey there kids, uh, welcome to a brand new school year. If you are in my class, uh, we'll be going over this stuff every day. If you are not in my homeroom class, feel free to become a subscriber to my channel, Mrs. Setness. Hit that subscribe button. Uh, we are using Eureka Math in our school district. Um, I'm gonna be teaching pretty much a lesson a day. That's the right pacing if you wanna cover all the material before your state testing uh, in the springtime. And uh, I do have videos recorded that I made last year during COVID, and, uh, but I'm missing a couple at the beginning and I wanna make them better. So what I like about my videos uh, I cover notes, so when we get started, we're gonna be taking notes, and then I try to connect like any old people math, like your adult math, that your parents might say, well, you're doing it one way, but I did it another way, and um, Eureka Math is kind of notorious for having like common core methods that parents aren't really understanding, and so I'm gonna try to make the connection between the old math, like the way I learned it, and the common core math, which is what's in Eureka Math. So without further ado, this is the beginning, modules one and two. This is the learn book, which has a blue spine. Anytime I'm making a video with a problem set, these are all in the learn book. That's pretty much what I make. If I make anything else, I will tell you that it's in the red succeed book or homework or an application problem or something like that. When you open up your book, you're going to see that for lesson one, it's just after the application problem. We're gonna skip that for today and go right to lesson one so you can kind of see what the lesson is all about. Now, the beginning of fifth grade math is really all about understanding place value. And some kids don't really understand what place value is and what what is the place and what does value mean. And so usually I don't start in the book, I start with notes and we first open up our spiral notebooks which will contain math only. And you're going to turn your math notebook on its side and you will make a place value chart of your own so that you can kind of refer back to it. So uh, take a look at this page and you can pause it as needed but you need to make your own place value chart label everything. Let me explain while you're drawing. The decimal is the anchor for all value of numbers. The decimal is what's going to be like the starting place, okay? Now if you move or place a digit to the left of the decimal, this would be the ones place and so this is where kids are counting on their fingers because you typically would have 10 fingers so what happens when you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. With your fingers, you get to 10, and then you have double digits. So we have a base 10 system of numbering. And in our base 10 system, every time you have double digits or you have a number that is 10 times the value, you have a shift in place value position. So each time a digit is placed in, say, a position like the ones, if I was to multiply it and say, well, I want the four to have 10 times the value. If I place the four in the 10 spot, then the value of the four is now 40. So that's where that comes from, like the shifting of the digits. So fill in the names of the place value positions. You have to know these this year, so start memorizing. If you wanna to go to the right because it's shorter, we can take a look at it. To the right of the decimal is the tenths place, okay? To the left is ones. We will go out this way in a minute. Why is there no ones? Well, because there's only one ones place, and that's right here. But when I have a digit that is in this spot, it has one-tenth of the value of the same digit in the ones place. Please write that down. Put an arrow right underneath the tenths position. Okay, if I was to place a digit in the hundredths place, spell it correctly, it's hundred but with a THS. Notice this is 10 with a THS and thousand 
with a THS. Okay, these are decimal, what we call decimal fractions, and it is one tenth the value of a number, a digit in the ones place, one one hundredth of the value of a digit in the ones place, the same digit, or one one thousandth the value of the same digit in the ones place. Now what about if I'm comparing from here to here? Each position is one tenth of the one next to it. Uh, a vocabulary word we often talk about is adjacent. You'll see that a lot uh, in fifth grade. Adjacent means next to. Okay, and so if a digit is next to another place value position, the digit on the left is 10 times greater than the one on the right. Conversely, or like on the flip side, the digit on the right is one tenth the value of the digit on the left. Okay, now off to the left here. Each time you go up, a higher place value position, you have a digit that's going to be 10 times greater. So just in the same way that if you shift to the right, it's one tenth the value. If you shift the digit to the left, it's going to be 10 times the value. Okay, so a digit like I did before, four in the tens place, has a 10 times greater value than the four in the ones place. Same way, it would have a 10 times greater value here in the hundreds place than in the tens place but it would have a hundred times greater value than in the ones place because of this two position shift. Continuing with your place value positions, you have to have the thousands place, the ten thousands place, the hundred thousands place. Each of these little sections is called a period. This is the ones period. This is the thousands period. This is the millions period. And I have um, another notebook that kind of has it uh, colored in, so I'll show you that in just a second. Finish out by going to the millions period, per, sorry, millions period, and then you get out past that and you have the billions period. We will talk about this a little bit in fifth grade, but uh, we mostly stay in the millions. But you do have to know billions, that's next. Notice and please write in your notes. Going this way on the place value chart increases the value of a digit 10 times for each position. That means 10 times greater for this one, then it goes another 10 times greater, then another 10 times greater, and another 10 times greater, and so on and so on. If ever you're moving this way on the place value chart, this is reducing the value of a digit by 1 tenth for each position. So you could say it's 10 times less. A lot of kids will say that, but in the book it's really gonna help you to see that it's one tenth of the value. And that's kind of how we're gonna approach it this year. One tenth of the value going right, that's when we're gonna divide. Or 10 times the value, and that would be multiplying. Here's the other place value chart. You can always pause the video if needed with the periods colored, units or ones period, thousands period, millions period. Each period goes ones, tens, hundreds with the, with the name except for this one. We don't say one ones, ten ones. You would just say like 40 or 50 or 500 or something like that. But this one you would always say thousands as your label. This one you always have millions as your label. Now here I have a couple of practice problems this is what we always do in the beginning. Um, I will write a number, we will read it as a class, and, um, and practice reading big numbers. What do you say when you get to the decimal? You're going to say and. So you really shouldn't say 10,110,000 and 100. You would not say that, and it, the book is going to make sure you learn that by putting the word and in when they want the decimal. So make sure you understand and means decimal. Okay, um, this one is, uh, if I have a one here, what's the difference between the value of this one and the value of this one? Okay, this one's a lot less of course, but how many uh, fractional units smaller or how many times less? you're gonna start counting place value positions less. 
Okay, if you want to compare it to here, you could say how many place value positions more. And when we multiply or divide, we're going to be using zeros to hold those place value positions. Okay, for example, looking at the one here, what's the difference between this one and this one? They're both ones, but the one here is 10 times the value of this one because this one is in the tens. This one here is 100 times greater than this one because this is in the ones and this is in the hundreds. So that is really the introduction for lesson one. You have to make your place value chart and you can practice writing these numbers, these digits into these columns and read these numbers. This would be 40,000, 601,020, 20,204,020, 20, 1,000,000, 10,001. Notice I haven't said and at all because I have no fractional units over here. This is 11,101,011. 11, and this is 10,110,100. And so notice that even though we have a super lot of digits here, reading it, it shouldn't be too hard because you're just going to say the three-digit number that's in that period and then say the period name. So notice when I said 20, it was 20 million. Then go to the next period, 204,000. Go to the next period, 20. And we don't say ones or units, you just say 20 because that's what's special about the units. Now what if I have something down here? 10,110,100. And you can say 10 thousandths because this zero is in the thousandths place. So if you have a zero there, you can read it that way. Or you could just say, one hundredth. And so I have that written down here in the notes. And so write that so that you can understand how to be a better reader of large numbers. But remember, the only time you can say and is when you have a decimal fraction that comes after the decimal when you have something more than just a number in the ones place. Okay? Now, this is going to be the end of the introductory video for lesson one. And we're going to get back to lesson one in the problem set so we can actually answer the questions um, on the next video. And the big idea for lessons one and two is to shift the digits around. And we're going to be multiplying by 10, 100, or 1,000. And we will also divide by 10, 100, or 1,000. And that's basically... Um, what we're going to do with a place value chart. That's why you have to have your place value chart that you just made and you will keep it handy when we do the video. Okay, so that's the end of this first video for this school year and come back and watch the next video for lesson one problem set. See you in a minute.